your financial advisors. A registered investment advisor, this show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full informed investment decision. This is your money, your wealth on Talk Radio 760 KFMV. Now, here's Joe Anderson and Big Al Clopine. Hey, welcome to the show. Show's called Your Money or Wealth. My name is Joe Anderson. I'm a certified financial planner. And I'm with, uh, as always, Big Al Clopine, Alan Clopine. He's a CPA. Thanks for tuning in over the next couple of hours. Got your email questions. Got a bunch of them this week, Al. Do you? Okay, good. Yeah, you can test Al. And then uh, I've we got, can... uh, I have some tax questions, All right, actually, well, as well, from Kipling's Your Tax Letter. You know, building wealth is simple but not easy. Yes. Right? It's kind of like getting in shape, right? Everyone yeah. knows what to do, but do they actually do it? I've been listening to this podcast. I'm going to see if I can get the guy on. Okay. Um, Stacking Benjamins. You ever heard of that one? No. It's pretty good. Okay. I mean, it's all it's pretty light personal finance. Yeah. And um, and they talk about a lot of the technology when it comes to um, different things when it comes to the apps, right? Right. On how you can save a couple of bucks here, a couple of bucks there, and you know different things like that. I was just actually listening to it on the way to the um, show today. And I don't know why we're promoting someone else's podcast, but it's because we got nothing else to talk about. Got nothing else, <laughs> but it's good. I mean, I mean, if if someone's good, I'm going to promote them. There you go. I like it. But it was like something as simple as um, this app that, like, I'm on Mint.com. Have you ever used Mint? Yes. Right. And so, once a quarter, since you've inspired me over the years, Al, to have a financial <laughs> summit. Yeah, you have one with yourself. I do have one with myself. <laughs> With mint, and it's like, what the heck am I spending my money on on this? Right, like Uber, it's crazy. Yeah, you know, Amazon, sure, uh, you know, just different things. Yeah, and I have these subscriptions, you know, these little teaser subscriptions, and it's like, well, what is this twelve dollars? Right, you know, what I mean, that, that's hitting my account every single month. Sure. So I was listening, and there's this app that I guess that goes, can, you know, you log in, it goes into your accounts, and then it will list all these different um, reoccurring bills. Okay, so you can see them, see, see if right. you need to shut them up. Yeah, and then all you got to do is like text back to the person and say, "No, get rid of it." Right. And so they'll do it for you. Oh. And wow. so it, you know, it's. I, like I mean, that. we're not talking thousands of dollars here, sure. but it could save you a few hundred bucks. Yeah, it's yeah. like the latte factor. Right? It is the latte factor, my friend. <laughs> it is the latte factor. Uh, but you know, just I guess little baby steps. Sometimes you know people are living. Um, I, I would say most are living paycheck to paycheck. Sure. But if they took a look at what they're really spending their money on, there could be some areas where they could trim. Yeah. Right. And so the app is actually called Trim. dot com. Trim. dot com. Yeah. I'm off to download Check that. Check it out. I like man. it. Check it. Like out. it. I know. I've got. Uh, and as you're talking, I'm sitting here thinking. I signed up for a monthly subscription to QuickBooks, and I didn't like that version, and so I went out and bought the CD. I forgot to turn it off. Exactly. It's been now several months. Right. It's like you don't even think about it, right? I, I know. It's cr- you know what? Uh, this is a really pathetic s- statement I'm going to say. I- I'm a financial planner. I'm pretty responsible. I'm very responsible with money. Yeah. But I have a storage unit, right? You that, do? Yeah, I have a storage unit. And that- a giant house that's empty? <laughs> Well, it's it, it, I've had this thing, Alan, for like 15 years. Okay. And I'm paying $120 a month. Do the math. $120 a month for the last, like, let's say 15, 12 years to store like $8 worth of garbage. Do you even know what's in there? No. I have this huge painting of or a picture. My ex, ex, ex-girlfriend, ex right, from 12, 15 years ago, he had a picture of me playing golf. And she made it into like a huge poster. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got it. So that's in there. That's in there. Got it. I mean, it's like I'm not going to put like a giant picture of, oh, maybe I will. Yeah, we need something new, something new for the lobby. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I'll bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> bring it back. <laughs> right, Check so, out your form. I mean, it's just these little s- stupid things right. that, um, you know, you either forget about it. And then as soon as you see it, you're like, oh, my God, I got to get rid of that thing. Yeah. I, you but know, then I, life gets in the way. I had the same thing with a safety deposit box. I, my dad said I had to get one in, the, in my 20s. And so I put some <laughs> but stuff yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, you got to put your stock certificates in yeah, there. I put some stuff in it. I don't know what I put in it in my 20s, my early 20s at that, Joe. And then every year I'd pay the 49 that was 59 that's that was $100 or right. whatever. And then. 
And then I, I must have moved because I stopped getting the bills. I never even thought of it. And then somehow they tracked me down and said, you got a safety deposit box. I'm thinking, gosh, I don't know where the key is. I mean, that was like 25 <laughs> right. years ago. So they said, well, you know what? For $350, we can actually bring a locksmith in and, and pull. And I'm thinking, I, I got probably $8 of stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. Forget it. You can have it. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah, I continue to pay these bills that are meaningless. So I'm going to get trimmed up. Okay, you're gonna get. I like it. Yeah, yeah. And there's other things, you know. It's, you know, when it, when it comes to building wealth. Well, there are Joe, and and uh, this uh, I actually want to talk about an article that I just saw, and this is talking about five things that wealthy people can teach us about money, and this is uh, this is from um, uh, the Millionaire Next Door concepts from the Millionaire Next Door, which is uh, Dr. Thomas Stanley wrote that uh, way back in. Uh, 1998, yeah. right? And, and I guess the premise of the book is the, the, you, you could have neighbors next door to you that are millionaires, and you wouldn't even know it. And it's just because they're living a, you know, kind of a regular lifestyle. But the, one of the keys is they are spending less than they're making right. and squirreling it away and saving it. And a lot of times you don't even know it because they'll be driving older cars or, or, or whatever. And Joe, these five things, I'll just kind of, well, maybe we'll go through these because I think they're pretty good. The first one, uh, the first concept is the millionaire next door. That the, the people that kind of fall into that category, they invest in themselves and focus on maximizing their income. Successful people often spend more time early in life focusing on bettering themselves, which leads to higher income the remainder of their lives. And, of course, it's not just young people. I mean, we need to keep investing in ourselves all throughout our career. Things are changing so rapidly that the, you have to stay ahead of the curve. And you know what happens when you do that? Not only is it more fulfilling for you, but income tends to be a lot better. And obviously that's one part of the equation is when you have more income, you've got more to work with in terms of saving. Number two is they pay themselves first, right, to automate their savings. And that, Key. man, that is such a big one, Jeff. I mean, we talk about this, but still it's so difficult to do. You know, but you have to. You've got to pay yourself first. What that means is that before all your bills and everything else, you pay yourself first, such as savings. Put money into your 401k plan, your Roth IRA, um, or just a savings account. Get that out of the way first. And then pay everyone else. Right. And it's, uh, gosh, because what's the average person do, Joe? Is It's like, oh, I'm going to save whatever's left over at month end. And funny thing happens for us that live in Southern California. The lifestyle is relatively expensive, and it's easy to spend money. And it's easy to, to look at your checkbook and say, Oh, I got a little bit of money. Let's go out to dinner or whatever it may be. And right. by month end, there's nothing left. And it happens month after month. And then as soon as you think you're going to get ahead of it, oh, well, then uh, I guess I, I want to get married. We need to save for that. And let's get a new home. Let's save, you know, so down payment, whatever. And these things are good. And the kids, kids are expensive. But in the meantime, you've gone through 20 years of working life without saving a penny. And it's difficult. And it's like even very responsible people fall into this trap. And I made a, um, a, a recommendation to an individual, hypothetically, of course, right? Um, and they, they had a 15-year fixed mortgage, right? right? And they weren't fully funding 401k plans, Roth IRAs, right? And they were going to sell the home, and they were putting in all this extra dollars. They had a 15-year mortgage, and plus they were putting extra to the mortgage payment. Sure. Right? And it's like, okay, well, here, if you're selling the home in, let's say, 10 years, five years, why are, why are you adding more? Why don't you just add more liquidity, right, in, into your retirement accounts, get a tax deduction, build money into a Roth IRA for those dollars to forever grow tax-free for you. Right. And so it's like, all right, we'll refinance now at a lot lower rate. They got, you know, un, you know under 4% sure. on a 30-year fix. And it freed up for them, you know, close to a couple thousand dollars a month of cash flow. Right. And then that cash flow then, of course, is supposed to be redeployed to max out 401k plans and then to put money into the Roth IRAs. Right. So we have review meetings with our clients, what, every three or four months. Sure. So the recommendation, yep, I'm going to talk to this mortgage broker. All right, we got the refinance done. Sounds great. All right, max out the 401ks. We'll see you back in four months. Right. Four months later, comes in. All right, so let's take a look at the balances of the 401k plan. Well, wait a minute. You're Nothing. still funding it the same. <laughs> what, yeah. what, we, uh, what's, where's the cash? Well, we've actually... You know, we went on a vacation. <laughs> you know, well, I guess we needed a new car. I, and like, oh my God, I just blew you up. 
Because you should have th- then just kept the 15 right. because you can't handle the extra cash flow. Because a 15-year mortgage, you're forced to you're pay forced it down. You're forced to. Right? You're and forced. If, and if you, if you have the extra money on a 30-year, that can be pretty good, but you have to have the discipline to save it for hey, this to actually work. Exactly. Hey, we're talking money today. It's uh, your money, your wealth. Um, Joe Anderson, Big Al, hanging out for the next couple of hours. Don't go anywhere. Go to purefinancial.com if you want more information about us. We'll be back in just a second. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. This is Your Money, Your Wealth on Talk Radio 760 KFMB. Hey, welcome back to the program. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. My name's Joe Anderson. I'm a certified financial planner. I'm with Big Al. Uh, Go to purefinancial.com. A lot of great information on there. Uh, we got about 300 videos on our website. Go to the Learning Center. We got a couple of different webinars. Uh, We did one recently on long-term care. Uh, We did one on Medicare. We had Dr. Katie. Uh, so she was on there. We did a tax planning one. We did a social security one. So a, a bunch of information uh, via webinar. So all you have to do is just go to our website and you can sign up and boom, watch it whenever you want. Uh, so there's our mission, I guess, is to continue to educate. I'm doing a reverse mortgage webinar uh, coming up here shortly. Yes. I, I have, he's a uh, professor at the American College. He's done some papers with uh, Dr. Wade Fow. Oh, he has. Okay. Well, about we, looking at the, we, because is, the reverse the same, mortgages change. We had a professor on our TV show talking about reverse mortgages. That guy that was cutting the cuff. Um, there's been significant law changes in that whole space. There has, and actually, and we don't sell reverse mortgages, but I'll just tell you the skinny, at least as I understand it, Joe, is some recent legislation, and I can't tell you exactly when, two, three, four years ago, has made reverse mortgages a lot more attractive in terms of, first of all, the, the in, I guess in most cases, what I understand now is that if there's a husband and wife, they will put both people on title. They will insist that both husband and wife are on title. Even if the wife or the husband, doesn't really matter which, is younger than 62, the reason what happened in the old days is the older Let's say the guy. The guy's it's eighty and the wife's 80 years 60, old. fifty. Fifty, whatever. <laughs> so so reverse mortgage, they get a big lump sum. Okay, the, the, the eighty year old, he lives five years, dies at eighty five, and the wife is forced to sell because the they they took the wife off the the title and just put the husband on so he could get a bigger lump sum. So as far as I understand, Joe, those uh, you can't really do that as much anymore. Right. So that's why we have a professor from the American College that specializes in this. Yeah, gonna because, do a web- cause we, don't, cause we don't really know. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing that I've been told is the fees aren't as bad as they used right, to be. Right, in the insurance and everything mm-hmm. else. So mm-hmm. um, <laughs> we're, we're talking about building wealth. Here. We are. We're talking about uh, The Millionaire Next Door. This is written in 1998 by Dr. Thomas Stanley. And if you've never read that book, it's definitely worth picking up. It's basically about people, everyday people, that become millionaires. And, and now at this point, they're becoming multi-millionaires just by following some pretty simple things. The first one that we talked about um, last segment was they invest in themselves, meaning that uh, they make sure that their skill level is, is good, they stay current with their profession, and that translates to higher income and more job security. Uh, second thing is they pay themselves first, which is very important. So the first check you write every single month should be to yourself, to your 401k, to your IRA. If you can automate it, all the better. A 401k is automatic right out of your pay. Out of sight, out of mind, you don't even have to think about it. The third one, Joe, is they don't leave money on the table. Boy, we have seen this over and over again. And of course, they're referring to a 401k match. and a 401k match. And most 401ks, not all, but most have a match. Uh, of maybe 3%, maybe 4%, some are even greater. In other words, if you put in 3%, let's say you make $100,000 just to make the math easy, 3% of that's $3,000. So you have 3,000 withheld out of your pay, they match it. The company puts in $3,000. So you put in $3,000 and now you got $6,000 sitting in your account. That's what a match is. So many people, Joe, are not even taking care of that match and that's like free money. Right. I mean, there's a lot of, um, I guess, scenarios that we could talk about by leaving money on the table. Uh, the match is, you know, just right in front of your face. Is like, right, if the company's going to give you a 100% guaranteed rate of return on your money because of their matching dollar for dollar up to a certain percentage, and so many people are still not taking advantage of it, you know, that's shame on you. Right. I, I mean, that's right there. You know that there's a match, hopefully, right? That, sure. you know, but here's a couple of others. How about this one? That let's say um, I have significant assets in a retirement account, right? Maybe I'm a small business owner, or maybe I'm retiring, uh, where my income is going to be significantly lower. 
right? Or maybe I have negative income because I had a loss in my business or maybe I had a real estate loss or something like that sure. where <clears throat> there could have been a substantial opportunity for them to do some tax moves with their money by moving money from their traditional IRA or 401k into a Roth IRA and not pay any tax at all or very little tax and then having all those dollars grow tax free. I mean, that's leaving money on the table. Yeah, it is leaving money on the table and we see that quite often. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're temporarily in a very low bracket, maybe as as Joe, as you just said, because of a business loss or real estate loss or, or job loss or something. Or just say you're retiring, right? Yeah, so or you're like, retiring and you're, and you're in a much lower bracket. So now all of a sudden it's like, here's what most people do is they do nothing. And it's like they look at their tax return the next year, and they had taxable income of negative fifty thousand dollars because they had they still have the deductions. They just didn't have income to offset it. And then you're thinking, my goodness, you could have done a Roth conversion of fifty thousand dollars and paid zero tax because the Roth conversion takes money out of an IRA and puts it into a Roth IRA. So yes, that's counted as income. But if you have negative taxable income to start with, or if you're in a low tax bracket, you pay very little taxes on that. Now you get this money to a Roth IRA that forever grows tax-free. And if you're thinking about saving money in taxes in retirement, having some of your dollars come out tax-free is key because that's what's going to keep you out of higher brackets later. Yeah, it's a hedge against higher taxes, higher inflation, where you have another pool of money that you can draw from that's not going to be taxed. And again, just for those of you that maybe never listened to the show before, Roth IRA is just a retirement account that you can establish, that you can invest in uh, just about any security out there besides collectibles and uh, um, life insurance. Uh, so if you want to invest in stocks or bonds, mutual funds, CDs, whatever investment that you choose, the difference between a Roth IRA is that it's an after-tax contribution but all those dollars grow tax free. So you put five thousand dollars into the Roth, it grows to ten thousand. When you pull that ten thousand dollars out, if you're over fifty nine and a half plus five years and so on, then you don't have to pay taxes on that growth. A traditional IRA is that you get the deduction by putting money into either your 401k plan, IRA, or any other qualified plan, but it grows tax deferred, and then when you pull it out, you pay tax. What Al and I have found over the last many, many years, we've been doing this show for 10 years, is that a lot of you have done what you were told and put a lot of money in the 401k plans, IRAs, and 403bs, and the like, but now that you're retiring or getting close to retirement or actually looking to get a strategy in place, you find that the bulk of your money is sitting in these 401k plans. Every dollar now is going to be taxed at ordinary income rates. Well, where do you think tax rates potentially are going to go? Do you want to replace your paycheck? How much money do you want to spend in retirement? These are all key factors to look at to have a sound retirement income strategy. But a lot of times they, 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 they keep taxes off the table. They don't necessarily look at it. Yeah, you're right, Joe. And, and I'll tell you, we see so many people that have just retired, or maybe they've been retired a few years, and their income is lower because they're trying to do the right thing with Social Security. They're waiting on their Social Security because if you wait, if you every year that you wait after full retirement age, which is currently age 66, you can get an 8% increase each and every month, each and every year. So it's a good idea to wait as long as you can afford it if you got money outside of retirement. And then they end up with these very low tax brackets. And then at 70, everything changes because now they take their Social Security and now they have to take their required minimum distributions. And if you don't know about that, when you have an IRA or 401k, you have to take money out of it when you're 70 and a half, whether you want to or not. And that amount, it works out to about 3.7%. For easy math, let's call it 4%. So if you got a million dollars in a 401k, then it's about $40,000. If it's 100,000, it's four grand, just to give you an idea. And if you can start converting while you're in lower brackets, see, because what's gonna happen by age 70 is you'll end up in higher brackets and uh, paying a lot higher taxes than you need to pay. So why not take some of the dollars off the table while you can so that you can have a much better retirement, paying less taxes all throughout the rest of your life? Because it's all about, Joe, it's all about taking control over your taxes. And I, I'll tell you, we talk to a lot of people. A lot of people don't realize they can take control over their taxes, and especially in retirement, because you have more control over how much you pay in taxes, actually more so than any other time in your life. You may not be hearing this from your current advisor because most tax repairs are focusing on the current year return and most financial advisors are focused on your investments. But if you can save on taxes, then your money's gonna go a lot further. You can do more things. You don't have to take as much risk in your in your portfolio. But you, the way to do this though is to have a forward-looking tax-efficient strategy, one that's gonna be mapped out. Now back to your money, your wealth on Talk Radio 760 AFMB. 
Hey, welcome back to the show. The show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Joe Anderson, Big Al Clopine. Thanks for tuning in today. Hopefully you're enjoying your weekend. Or if you're listening to the podcast, whatever day that you're listening to this, uh, hopefully you're enjoying yourself uh, just fine. What well, we got a couple more of these building wealth strategies, yeah. don't we? Yeah, building wealth from uh, the millionaire next door. We talked about investing in yourself because uh, keeping yourself current, relevant, you make more money that way, you have more job security, you pay yourself first, like in a 401k, so that the savings is automatic. You don't leave money on the table. Uh, a lot of 401ks have matches. A lot of people are not taking advantage of them. Next one, Joe, is, and you alluded to this in the first segment, is they live below their means. And, and this is one of those things where everyone knows this, right? Spend less than what you make. Sometimes it's easier said than done because it's very easy to spend. But I'll tell you, a real simple way to do this is this pay yourself first concept. In other words, the money goes right into your 401k, to your IRA, to your non-qualified savings account first. And then you you see what else you have. Yeah, you can spend that. That's I'm okay with that. Right. I mean, then it's, a, it's a more of a freeing feeling because it's like, all right, do a little bit of planning first, though, right? Find out how much money that you should be saving to accomplish whatever goals that you're looking at doing. If it's retirement, putting the kids through school, whatever it is. All right, so look at that first. And then you can determine how much money that you should be saving. So let's say I have to save, I don't know, $1,000 a month. Well, then I can work up to that. I'm going to pay myself first, though. Maybe it's not a full $1,000 a month if I can't afford it. Maybe it's 500 bucks a month, right? But I know that that $1,000 is there. So once I reach that $1,000, I got to recalculate because it's going to have to be a little bit more than that because I wasn't able to save the full sure. thousand throughout that time. You bet. But I'm going to be a lot closer if I didn't do that homework, right? Right. <clears throat> but once I say, all right, well, here, I'm going to set a goal of saving X. Save that X every single month, but challenge yourself. Don't say I'm going to save $100, you know what I mean? Right. Make it an aggressive goal. Hey, I want to max out my 401k plan. That should be the goal of everyone that's listening. If you're not maxing out your 401k plans and Roth IRAs, you you have to get there. You have to get there. And I know a lot of our listeners do do that, but there's also a handful that don't. That's the goal. Try to get to that point. Once you hit that point, then spend everything else, right? Just do, because you're going to be that much more ahead of the game. Right. And then when you do spend lavishly and say, you know what, we're going to go on a vacation, or I am going to buy this or buy that, it, right? You've already saved. You already paid yourself first. Yeah. But then subconsciously, you're going to say, you know what, I, I, I don't need that. I'm going to bank more money yeah, because that, I want to retire earlier or I want to spend lavishly later in life. Yeah, Joe, to me, a lot of it comes down to peace of mind. And when you talk to people that don't have a plan and they're spending every penny, and part of this comes from they are so stressed out. They know, they're, they, know they need to save. Everyone knows. It's just like getting in shape. Everyone knows you got to exercise. But did you do a cardiovascular exercise four times last week? Uh, no, I, I uh I, I walked. Uh, I walked around the block. I walked to the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> everyone knows. I ran to the fridge. Everyone knows they need to save more and spend less. But here's what happens: is, has this happened to you, or in parts of your life? So it's like life is expensive. Maybe you've got some some kids or some new kids, and and all of a sudden things are more expensive, and maybe your spouse is not working anymore, and so you're going through this phase where you're not saving, and you know that you should be saving, and then that starts to compound the stress, and then if there is a little extra money at month end, you spend it because you're thinking, well, I deserve this, right? right? Because I've got a hard life. I got this and that. I deserve it. But that just compounds the stress. And then the next month, you're even more stressed, and it just keeps compounding. And when we talk to people in their 50s and 60s that haven't saved anything, they are just a mess when it comes to talking about this. And some people never get to that point. They just say, you know what, Joe, Al, I'm going to work till, I'm, till I drop. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, the point- and they're, they're, they're lying to themselves. Right. Right? They're lying to themselves. And you also have this, too, is that my lifestyle costs me... Um, Ninety thousand dollars, but I think I can cut down to fifty. Right, <laughs> right. Sure. It's or, or hey, or I'm I'm spending sixty now, but I think I can spend about two thousand a month. Right. There's no. Uh, it's so difficult to do that. Yeah. Just because of just uh, the, the rationale of individuals of like, well, no, I deserve this and this and that. Everything comes up in life. You can have the best budget, right? No, nope, we're gonna pay this, 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 and this. But guess what? Air conditioning goes out. There's a leak in the roof. The car breaks down, right? All these unexpected expenses happen. 
And so it's like, well, no, I only spend X amount. So a lot of you underestimate how much that you're actually spending, right? So if you get a little bit tighter on that, can you cut some of those expenses? Yes. But there are some expenses that are just part of everyday life. Yeah. And you got to plan for them. And when you are looking at budgeting, it's... uh, Because that's another excuse too, right? It it is. Because I I have enough money to provide a lifestyle for $40,000, but I don't for seventy. dollars so of course I'm well. I'm gonna spend forty. Well, all right. Well, good luck. Right. You will spend forty once you burn through your whole nest egg. <laughs> then you're gonna be stuck to spending that, right? Yeah. And and how many? I think it's something about fifty percent of baby boomers. Their sole source of income will be Social Security, which really is only designed to be about a third, if that, of your income. So it's it's getting control of these things right now, and and it's it's I mean talk, you're talking about uh, people coming in. Also, what happens, Joe, is is we'll sit down and say, how much are you spending? And they'll say three thousand a month. Okay, so that's thirty six thousand a year. That's yeah, okay. If I if I the mortgage, the utilities, the yeah groceries, yeah, that's about right. And then you look at their pay, and they make one hundred twenty thousand a year. And even if you are aggressive on taxes and withholdings and so forth it's like well okay so you you net 80 to 90 thousand dollars so so you're telling me well, I'm gonna round it up so you're for, you're spending 40 thousand a year but you're netting 80 to 90 so you've got 40 or fifty thousand dollars of savings each and every year right and that's what that's about four thousand a month or five thousand a month oh well, I know no, we don't have that nothing well, then you're spending more than 3000 a month. And that's actually a good wake-up call for a lot of people to think about, all right, what's my net pay? Uh, and am I saving on top of that? And if you are, good for you. If you're not, well, then your net pay is what you're saving and what you're spending. And then in some cases, you're spending more than that because your credit card bills are going up or your home equity loan is going up. And it happens each and every year with regularity. Right. And then you got the other side of the coin there, too, the absolute extremists that just have the all you know spreadsheet after spreadsheet and every, they're they're tracking every penny you know it's like oh you know i'm so upset with my spouse cuz they took cash out of the atm without telling me <laughs> oh the whole the whole thing is screwed up my whole fun, i'm like you just take you take a deep breath right there's <laughs> other not, things in life than your bad. spreadsheet right yeah, so it's, but thinking about that i was just thinking about this was a couple of years ago joe and we all, always have to say these are hypothetical stories but they're based on reality but i remember a case where um wife uh the husband made an investment mistake about 12 years earlier and every like about every three minutes she would look at him and say remember that mistake you made and the guy was i just i felt sorry for him i mean come <laughs> on that let's move remember on that? let's move on <laughs> uh. But I think sometimes it's very difficult to get over that. I mean, yeah, there was an instance, um, hypothetically, of course, where, (laughs) I mean, this guy blew up his 401k. He had, um, they had a beautiful home, a million dollar home, um, Mission Hills in um, Southern California, San Diego, a million plus home, right? Leveraged to the hilt. Yeah. She didn't know it was leveraged to the hilt. She thought, you know, we're making all these extra payments. She thought that he had about nine hundred thousand. He was an executive, made three hundred thousand bucks a year. So yeah. he was. He started like trading options, right? Right. And then all of a sudden, it's like it's gambling. He was like, "Oh, I'm doubling down here, and I lost my shirt here, and I got to make up for it because I don't want to tell my wife that we're I lost a hundred thousand. So if I just do this to get back right. the hundred thousand I just lost, right? And then I won't do this anymore. And then boop, double down, double down, double down. And keep losing. Blue one, uh, right? So then they come in and he's like, "Yeah, Joe, I think we're getting a divorce." <laughs> right? <laughs> she's just like, I mean, she's miserable. She's like, I can't believe that he hid this from me. Right. But that's a problem. You have to communicate. When it comes to money, if you're in a relationship, because it's not the amount of money that people have that gets divorced, right? Lack thereof or more. It's just the communication piece of it. Sure. Right? So communicate with your spouse. (laughs) I I was with a a buddy of mine 
over the weekend, we we're watching a Gator game. So he's like, yeah, you know, I, I went to Best Buy and bought a you know, new TV for his man cave or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Like, oh, my wife's all over me because I spent this. He goes, you know what? That causes divorce. So I got my own credit card so she doesn't know what I'm spending. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> get me out of this conversation. I don't need to hear about this. Yes, right? I want to watch the game. <laughs> all right, hey, we uh, up against the clock here. Once again, we got to take another break. Go to purefinancial.com if you want more information about us, if you want to come into the office, you want to see Big Al, myself, or any other fine professional that we have at our team, purefinancial.com the place to be be back in just a second show's called your money your wealth now back to your money your wealth on talk radio 760 kfmb hey welcome back to the show show's called your money or wealth joey anderson here i'm a certified financial planner i'm with alan clopine he's a cpa thanks for tuning in um, if you're new to the show alan and i have been doing this show for about 10 years what else you got in this wealth tracker well <laughs> <laughs> the fifth step that wealthy people do, this is written by a financial advisor, kind of summarizing the Thomas Stanley book, The Millionaire Next Door. And, of course, we talked about the uh, investing in yourselves first, paying yourself first, don't leave money on the table, living below your means. Joe, I'm going to have you guess. This is written by a financial advisor. Get financial advice. Yes. Yeah. Get professional advice. Se yes. Se very self-serving. Sure. I mean, there's there's some truth in that. I mean, one good thing about a financial advisor is they the, they can provide some discipline for you. But make sure you go to the right financial advisor. Yeah. Like NAPFA.org is a pretty good website. That's yeah. a fee-only uh, fiduciary website. National Association of Personal Financial Advisors. Um, you know, you can take a look there. Our advice is always to look for probably a larger firm. Uh, that has more than potentially just a sole practitioner. Sure. But here's a problem, I think, too. Unfortunately for the public, is that f the, the, the fee only community is pretty small. Right. You know, and then the really good fee only advisors, right, they have minimums of millions of dollars. Sure. Right. If you want to work with them, because there's a, maybe a one man person that, right, if you got two hundred, five hundred thousand dollars it's like, well, no, I, I can't help you. My time is too valuable. You need to have 10 million bucks. Right. You know, with our firm, we want to help everyone that wants to be helped. So I guess that was self-serving. Yeah, well, that's, anyway. yeah, that's right. Joe, I want to get into, uh, for the time we have left here in the segment, uh, the two candidates, the presidential candidates and what they are proposing with regards to income taxes, and, and it's a bit shocking. It's pretty different, Joe. So right yeah, I just saw um, Trump, he's got what now, three tax brackets, yeah. 33, yeah. 15, and 12 or something, yeah. 16 and 12? Four, well, counting zero. Oh, okay. Zero is the first one, you're right. So, so yeah, let's, let's start with that, ordinary tax brackets. Right now we have a tax system that starts the lowest brackets 10%, and it goes up to 396 uh, Hillary wants to keep that in place, but add an extra 4% if you're over $5 million of income. So kind of the tax the rich, kind of the Buffett rule. Is What's what, that tax rate? It's an extra 4%. So that'll be 40, 40, 40, 44. 43.6. Yeah, 43.6. Correct. Yeah, that's exactly right. And Donald Trump wants to change the brackets to be 0, 12, 25, and 33, which uh, definitely would help us. Would they, would, I guess... I'm understanding Hillary's in a sense where it's still the same, same. marginal rate. Yes. Where once you get to that certain level, then you got to pay a little bit more. Correct. Um, but w would it still stair step in Trump's, or would it be a straight flat rate it, it once you get there? It would still stair step in Trump, and I don't have what the brackets would be. But you would yeah. still pay. What 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 are the three? What it's zero, twelve, twenty five, and thirty three percent. And the thirty-three percent, I think, is over two hundred fifty thousand. I think so. Right? I think that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, significant savings for yeah. high income earners. Yeah. Capital gains, dividends. That's a big one. Uh, so Trump wants to keep the current capital gain law, but eliminate the three point eight percent net investment income tax. That's for the Obamacare. Right. Well, yeah, Medicare and yeah. healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, but Hillary wants to have an, an, another four percent surtax over four million. And then she wants to have a midterm tax uh, on midterm capital gains. So instead of everything over a year gets the preferential treatment, she would have uh, a, from a year to two to all the way to six years at varying uh, tax rates. And the lowest rate for high wage earners would be 23.8. That's what it is right now. That's the 20% plus the 3.8% Medicare surtax. And the highest rate, Joe, would be 43.4, the same as the ordinary income tax rate. So in essence, a shorter term capital gain under two years would be still be taxed at ordinary. ordinary income rates. So she's just basically saying, all right, well, right now, because if you don't hold your assets for a year, 
right? Then you're paying, then, right? The short term capital gains is ordinary income. Right. So she's just pushing that out for two years, then it's ordinary income. Yeah. But would it be at that rate or would it be at your ordinary income rate? Uh, I'm probably guessing it would be at your ordinary I, income rate. I believe it would be, yeah, I think it would be at your ordinary income rate. Yeah. So the, the highest would be the yes. 44 given her new plan. Exactly, if you're already in a high income bracket. A couple more things quickly. Alternative minimum tax. Donald Trump wants to eliminate it altogether. Uh, and Hillary wants to expand it a little bit by having a 30% minimum rate uh, for incomes over a million dollars. And that's actually, in parentheses, the Buffett rule. And then how about this one? Uh, in terms of flow-through income from a business, like let's say you own an S-corp, S-corporation yeah. or LLC. Right now, it's it's whatever your ordinary income rate is. Trump wants to cap that tax at 15%. So, oh, my God. You know how much abuse that would be? <laughs> <laughs> So, in other words, you've got a really successful company, makes $10 million, uh, S-corporation, you'll only pay 15% tax on that. Yeah, you pay yourself a $100,000 salary. If that. And then nine point, <laughs> yeah, you pay yourself ten grand salary. Pay ordinary income tax on that, and everything else is the flow through at 15%. Yeah, well, anyway, these are all interesting things. And, and of course, Joe, with uh, we know with the uh, dysfunction of our Senate and Congress, it's probably pretty unlikely that many of this, these things will happen. But it's interesting to know at least where, where the candidates are and what they're thinking about. And when it comes to taxes and retirement, you know this. Your taxes don't stop when your paycheck does. When you start tapping your retirement nest egg, it comes with all sorts of new rules and opportunities. And instead of contributing to your tax-deferred accounts that actually reduce your taxes, you'll start pulling money out of those accounts, and you have to pay taxes on those dollars. So I'll tell you, as you near retirement, tax planning becomes more important than ever. But you must use a forward-thinking tax strategy because, believe it or not, you got more control over paying taxes in retirement, more than you think, actually more so than any other time in your life. 